Growing up, my dad had been a trucker my entire life. He would often come home and tell off the wall stories that I thought were completely bogus until I had something happen to me on the road. It was when I was on a multi-state truck haul. I remember it as if it were yesterday because it was my first and my last time going across several regions while driving overnight. When I looked at my dash clock, the time was reading just past 2 a.m. It was dreadful outside. The snow was falling heavily onto the road and I could barely make out the road with my windshield wipers on high. Since I had never driven cross state before, this area of the route was completely unfamiliar to me. The road was the windiest thing I'd ever seen thus far. So far, I hadn't even passed a sign for a rest area or even a truck stop. The road was entirely dark except for the reflectors that lined the roadway. I decided right then that if it didn't ease up soon, I was going to get off at the closest stop and wait out the storm. I started to get an eerie feeling though when my CB radio went to nothing except static. It was unusual because nothing had ever happened like that before, and I was driving through some bad spots. I started to fiddle with the dial to try and gain some signal back, but I was stopped in my tracks when I noticed blinking tail lights up the way. The car wasn't completely off the road, so if I wanted to get by it, I'd have to pass under the other lane for a split second. This alone caused me to have to slow down significantly. I eased onto the brake, and I remember feeling a rush of annoyance at the fact that these people just left their car like this. I waited a few seconds to make sure nobody was coming the opposite way. And when I was satisfied that there wasn't, I made my way to the side and passed them. I will never forget what I saw when I did that. As I drove past the car, I noticed a figure in the back seat. Still going slower than normal, I stared harder until I could see that there was a boy in the back. I had a son, and I knew this kid could not have been older than 10. I felt my stomach clench. I felt I had no other option except to stop. I didn't know if this kid was hurt or if he needed help, and I couldn't just leave him out there like that. Walking back to the car, I felt the hair on the back of my neck stand up. Something in the air felt wrong. Once I got up to his door, I saw that he was all right. He might have looked a little worn but not injured. I remember trying to speak to him, and he wouldn't say anything except they took my mom and dad. Now I'm not easily freaked out, but that got me. It took me a second to find my words, but before I could say anything, I heard a shrill scream come from the woods beside me. It didn't sound human. It sounded feral. It was startling. The little kid didn't seem too concerned by it. It confused me because he all seemed excited and relieved. I was not too keen on it and tried to usher him to my truck, but the next words out of his mouth stopped all of that. It sucked any concern for this kid out of my body. He looked me in the face with a dead look on his face and said that the noise was his parents and he couldn't leave. Then he started giggling. The twinkle flipped back in his eyes. Opposite to him, dread loomed within me. Out of the corner of my eye, I caught a glimpse of something running at the tree line. It wasn't close enough for me to get a good look, but from the sounds I kept hearing, it seemed like it was getting pretty close, closer than I felt comfortable with being. Then I heard another scream. It sounded like it was right beyond the front line of the trees, almost like if it stepped out of the shadows, it would be on the road. I tried to get the little boy to come with me, but he started screaming. Abandoning him, I sprinted back to my truck and fumbled, trying to start it up. After I was running, I hightailed it out of that stretch of wood. I don't know if I was imagining it or not, but I could have sworn I had seen someone running on the tree line beside me. I pushed the pedal down until all at once the canopy above me opened, and I looked to see that I had service back. I made a call to 911 right then. I didn't know if the kid was okay or if he needed help, but the cops could sort it out. I let that night play in my mind for a few days before following up with law enforcement. What they told me left me with more questions than answers, and I don't know if I want to even know. The lady told me that they never found a boy in the car. The car was there, but when they searched the vehicle it belonged to a couple that was from Michigan. They had since been combing the woods for them, but no couple or signs of a couple had been located. I still look online now and then, but still nothing. I quit interstate trucking the following week. I stick to the daytime hours now. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel.
to stay updated on more spine-chilling content. Hit that notification bell so you never miss a bone-chilling upload. Join us if you dare. Adventures on the road can be testing for truckers, grappling with challenging weather conditions, peculiar sights, and an array of issues. However, one evening unfolded in a manner distinct from any other. Cruising through an isolated stretch of road, the driver, engrossed in the engine's hum and intermittent static from the radio, confronted an unforeseen and disconcerting situation. A thunderous thud against the driver's side window caught them off guard as they neared a set of lights, on the brink of tuning in the radio. A person outside urgently signaled and shouted, requesting a lift to the closest service station, asserting that their car had broken down. Despite initial reservations, the driver, feeling uneasy, lowered the window slightly and consented to offer the individual a ride. Throughout the journey, they exchanged pleasantries, seemingly ordinary until they arrived at the service station. It was at this juncture that the situation took a sinister twist. The passenger brandished a knife, pressing it against the driver's side, demanding the wallet and all the cash. In a state of shock, the driver surrendered the wallet and phone, but firmly refused to part with the money, asserting its necessity for fuel. The driver's composed negotiation resulted in a compromise. The passenger acquiesced to letting them retain the money in exchange for a lift to the closest town. The driver complied, feeling under duress, and remained vigilant at every step. The clerk at the service station sensed something awry, but the driver couldn't convey the imminent danger. The passenger cautioned against divulging the incident, threatening the use of the knife. Upon returning to the service station later, the driver disclosed the incident to the clerk and promptly contacted the authorities. The police gathered details from surveillance footage, recounting the events and securing an image of the criminal. After a few days, the police reached out to the driver, disclosing that the passenger was a fugitive with a criminal record. The individual had been employing the same modus operandi to victimize drivers and sustain their life on the run. While appreciative of being unharmed and alive, the driver acknowledged the enduring impact of that night. Since then, they adopted additional precautions on the road, refraining from picking up strangers and ensuring that doors were securely locked and windows closed, particularly during nocturnal journeys. This nerve-wracking encounter metamorphosed into a lesson in prioritizing safety for this watchful truckie. I work as a mail carrier in Roswell, New Mexico. The residents here are spread out over long distances, and it's my daily routine to embark on a lengthy drive through the desert to ensure everyone receives their mail. In February 2023, I found myself near the Valles Caldera National Preserve when I experienced a flat tire. It was getting late in the afternoon and darkness was approaching. The desert can get chilly at night year-round, and to make matters worse, Cell phone service is unreliable in this area. My reception was non-existent. I faced the choice of waiting for a passing car, hoping for assistance, or hiking up a hill to try and get a signal. The alternative was to wait for the post office to send someone to find me along the highway, but that could take hours, and I wasn't keen on spending the night alone in the desert. I opted to hike, thinking I could make it up and back just before dark, and praying for a signal at the top. About halfway up the hill, I decided to take a short break and have a sip of water. As I sat on a rock, I heard strange sounds, reminiscent of loud chattering, like the cicadas I remembered from my time in the eastern U.S. The noise seemed to be coming from behind a rocky outcropping directly in my path. With no alternative route in sight, I cautiously moved forward to investigate. As I began walking, I accidentally stepped on a loose rock, losing my footing and sliding down a few feet before regaining control. The chattering ceased, and I spotted a six-foot-tall slender insectoid creature with the head of a grasshopper. It had two prominent antennas on its head and a pair of sizable pincers extending from its thorax, with an additional smaller pair underneath. The creature swiftly moved left and then right, pausing twenty feet away. It was a horrifying sight. Uncertain whether to stand my ground or run, I took another look at its menacing pincers and opted for the latter. I slowly backed away, mimicking its movements, while it observed me intently. Suddenly my cell phone began ringing loudly. The creature's antennas snapped to attention, and it rapidly descended the hillside. Without a moment's hesitation, I sprinted in the opposite direction, 
stumbling and falling as I moved. Eventually I reached the bottom of the hill near my mail truck. I quickly hopped into the truck and stayed put, hoping the creature would keep its distance. I caught a glimpse of it as it moved around the hill, but I remained inside the safety of the truck for several hours, not daring to leave its protective confines. Buddy, let me spill the beans about this insane road rage incident that happened one night. It was like a scene straight out of an action flick, only it unfolded right before my eyes. Two pickup truckers locked in a fierce battle fueled by anger and adrenaline, tearing up the freeway. I was just cruising down the road minding my own business when I spotted them up ahead. These two beefy trucks blaring their horns and weaving in and out of lanes like lunatics. It was evident from the start that something had seriously gone south between them. As I inched closer, I could see the rage on their faces. The first trucker, a hefty guy with tattoos and a trucker cap, was leaning out of his window, hollering and gesticulating like a maniac. The second trucker, equally menacing, responded with equal force, his voice resonating through the night. Their heated exchange quickly escalated into a full-blown chase. The trucks thundered down the freeway, darting dangerously through traffic. It was like a high-stakes game of cat and mouse, with each driver hell-bent on outdoing the other. The tension was thick, man. Horns blared, tires screeched, and innocent drivers had to slam on their brakes to dodge getting caught in the crossfire. People were shouting and cursing, their voices blending with the roar of the engines. I clenched my steering wheel, keeping my eyes fixed on the spectacle ahead. I couldn't look away, even though the logical part of my brain was shouting at me to get out of there. It was like witnessing a train wreck I couldn't ignore, even though I knew it was perilous. The road rage showdown continued for a considerable time, these truckers cut each other off, forcing the other to swerve or hit the brakes. It was a reckless display of aggression, a battle for supremacy on the freeway. But just when I thought things couldn't get wilder, fate stepped in. The two trucks, hurtling down the freeway at a breakneck speed, collided with a thunderous impact. Metal twisted and shattered, debris scattering across the road. It was a gut-wrenching sound, one that turned my stomach. For a moment, the world went silent. Smoke billowed from the wreckage as the two truckers stumbled out, bewildered and disoriented. It was a sobering sight, a reminder of the consequences of their rage-fueled actions. The adrenaline that had propelled them turned into shock and regret. Emergency services arrived, sirens blaring, taking charge of the situation. It was a scene of pandemonium and ruin, a stark reminder of the perils of road rage. As I drove away, the image of those wrecked trucks haunted me. It was a chilling reminder that anger, when unleashed on the road, can have devastating consequences. That road rage incident served as a wake-up call, man. It made me realize that we've got to keep our composure on the road no matter how angry or frustrated we get. Cause, in the end, risking lives for a fleeting moment of blind rage just ain't worth it.